It's time to stand like the people. Stand up and say, we're on our way, the sacred African way. It's time to stand like a people. It's always been time for us to stand like a people as long as we've been on these shores, but our ancestors knew how to stand before the oppression, before the enslavement. They were standing, relating to, to, to the most high, relating to the forces of nature, relating to their relationships with each other, the relationship between humanity and nature, and finding the best path so we can have the fullest life possible. It's time to stand up in that sacred African way. Ashe, Ashe. We just want to welcome all of you to this Bose community of the sacred African way spiritual celebration. Our members and uh, longtime members and new folks. If you're new to this uh, gathering, we, we welcome you. So it's just wonderful to be here together in the spirit of Mott, in the spirit of Mott, the spirit that flows, that sacred Holy Spirit that flows from the heart, the core, the essence of our creator, calls us to rise up and be one in that spirit, in that power, in that love. Right now, we're gonna move ahead to our World State Community Affirmation. Uh, Ama Fania and Sister Jalia, uh, would you come forward and light us up? I'm in Rahatep, Rose. Rose Community Affirmation. We will know God's truth to be free and self determined. Creator, <clears throat> Creator, help us to remember the humanity, glory, and suffering of our ancestors and to honor the struggles of our elders. Let us strive to bring new vision and life to our people. Let there be peace and harmony among us. Grant us power. No, let us be loving, sharing, and creative. Let us work, study, and listen, so we may learn, teach, and cultivate self reliance Grant us power, O Holy One, as we struggle to resurrect our hearts and our homeland. We will raise our children according to the needs of our nation, with discipline, patience, devotion, and courage. We will strive to be the living models of the new direction of our people. We are an African people. We are children of God. Ashe. Ashe, Ashe indeed. And now we're going to have a, a song, a song by Baba Tayemba, it says, and that'll be followed by historical tribute by Minister Bill. We make some. Check. Check. Testing. Say, the Conke. Should we tell these brothers how we feel about them today on Father's Day? Tell them how great they are. Tell them how much we love them. Uh, I think that's a good idea, Sephora. Let's 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 do this. All right. Yeah. He is my king. He is my one. Yes, he's my father. Yes, he's my son. I can talk to him because he understands everything I go through and everything I am. He's my support system. I can't live without him. The best thing since I spread is his kiss, his lips, his hugs, his touch. And I just want the whole world to know about my black brother. I love you. I will never try to hurt you. I want you to know that I'm here for you forever true. Cause you're my black brother, strong brother. There is no one above you. I want you to know that I'm here for you forever true. He's misunderstood. Some say that he is up to no good around the neighborhood. 
But for your information, a lot of my brothers got education. Check it out. You got your Wall Street brother, your blue collar brother. You're down for whatever living on the corner brother, a talented brother. And for all y'all behind bars, you know we love you because you're our black brother. I love you. I will never try to hurt you. I want you to know that. I'm here for you forever, true, because you're my life. I love you. I will never try to hurt you. I want you to know that I'm here for you forever, true, because you're my black brother, strong brother. There is no one above you. I want you to know that I'm here for you forever true. You mean so much to me. I'm so proud of you. You give me what I need. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud. Of you. I love you for staying strong. You got it going on. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Going through thick and thin. Brother, you're going to win. I'm so proud of you. Whenever you're facing doubt, brother's going to work it out. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Because you're my black brother. I love you. I will never try to hurt you. I want you to know that I'm here for you forever too. Cause you're my black brother, our brother. I will never try to hurt you. I want you to know that I'm here for you forever too. Cause you're my black brother, our brother. I will never. Try the version. I want you to know that I'm here for you forever. True. We love you. Happy Father's Day. I see. I see. I see. I see. Now we have one of those black brothers coming. Minister Bill with our historical tribute. I say, grand rising, we'll say. Now it's time for not quite a historical tribute, but another future focus. Just as it's important to relay our history throughout our family, it's important to recognize our current victories in progress. We speak often of the seen and the hidden. So today, as I highlight the surface of the hidden, I trust that you will say, will appreciate those behind the hidden figures today. So this father needs no introduction at all. He stands surrounded by his very greatest works. And though ESPN might be sleeping on today's featured sisters, we'll say knows the real from the unreal. We recognize and celebrate African excellence in all its forms all around us. Joy Bulamwini founded Jovial Designs in high school, developed a web presence for the Ethiopian embassy in Cote d'Ivoire, learned Chi as a child in Ghana and studied in Barcelona. She represented the U.S. in a global student entrepreneurship competition, developed a mobile survey system for the Carter Center, got a BS at Georgia Tech, graduated as a Stamps President Scholar, was the youngest finalist in the Georgia Tech Inventure Prize, and was selected for a Fulbright Research Award in Zambia. She's a Rhodes Scholar, a Fulbright Scholar, Stamps Scholar, an Astronaut Scholar, and an Anita Borg Institute Scholar. She studied learning and technology at Oxford, working on community projects 
in Oxford's very first formal service year. She received her master's and PhD in media arts and sciences from MIT with her work entitled Facing the Coded Gates. Joy Wolomwini was born to an Ashanti mother, an artist, and a Dagao father, professor of medicinal chemistry. My heart smiles as I bask in their legacies, knowing their lives have altered many destinies. In her eyes, I see my mother's poise. In her face, I glimpse my auntie's grace. In this case of deja vu, a 19th century question comes into view. In a time when Sojourner Truth asked, ain't I a woman? Today, we pose this question to new powers, making bets on artificial intelligence, hope towers. The Amazonians peek through windows blocking deep blues as faces increment scars. Old burns, new urns, collecting data chronicling our past, often forgetting to deal with gender, race, and class. Again, I ask, ain't I a woman? Face by face, the answers seem uncertain. Young and old, proud icons are dismissed. Can machines ever see my queens as I view them? Can machines ever see our grandmothers as we knew them? Ida B. Wells, data science pioneer, hanging facts, stacking stats on the lynching of humanity, teaching truths hidden in data, each entry and omission, a person worthy of respect. Shirley Chisholm unbought and unbossed the first black congresswoman, but not the first to be misunderstood by machines well-versed in data-driven mistakes. Michelle Obama, unabashed and unafraid to wear her crown of history, yet her crown seems a mystery to systems unsure of her hair. A wig, a buffon, a toupee? Maybe not. Are there no words for our braids and our locks? The sunny skin and relaxed hair make Oprah the first lady. Even for her face, well-known, some algorithms falter echoing sentiments that strong women are men. We laugh, celebrating the successes of our sisters with Serena smiles. No label is worthy of our beauty. Thank you. My heart smiles as- One of her cohorts, someone who worked with her is Deborah Raji. She was born in Nigeria and moved to Ontario at age four. She's working in algorithmic bias also, AI accountability and algorithmic auditing. She worked with Joy with Timmy Gebru and the Algorithmic Justice League on researching gender and racial bias in facial recognition technology. Her work as a Mozilla Foundation Fellow researching algorithmic auditing and evaluation. She's been recognized by MIT Technology Review and Forbes is one of the world's top young innovators. She studied engineering science at the University of Toronto and founded Project Include, a nonprofit increasing student access to STEM education, mentorship, and resources in Toronto's low income and immigrant communities. Raji worked with Joy at MIT and the Algorithmic, Algorithmic Justice League, auditing commercial facial recognition technologies from Microsoft, Amazon, IBM, and others. They found these technologies alarmingly less accurate for dark-skinned women than for white men. With support from other top AI researchers and increased public pressure and campaigning, their work led IBM and Amazon to agree to support facial recognition regulation and later halt the sale of their product to police for at least a year. Raj also worked on a computer vision model for, for flagging images at learning startup Clarify. She worked with Google's ethical AI team on creating model cards, a framework for more transparent machine learning reporting. She also co-led development of internal auditing practices at Google. Her contributions were presented and published at the Association for Computing Machinery's Conference on Fairness, Accountability, and Transparency. Raji was a 2019 Summer Research Fellow at the Partnership on AI, setting machine learning transparency standards and benchmarking norms. 
As a tech fellow at NYU's AI Now Institute, she worked on algorithmic AI auditing and how to operationalize ethical considerations in machine learning. The facial recognition system bias was highlighted in the 2020 documentary, Coded Bias. Over the years, I've come to realize how impactful and influential AI is as a technology. And it's so important to understand the different ways in which that technology works to make it less intimidating, to make it clear that it's a series of human decisions that we can control rather than um, this futuristic sci-fi uncontrollable thing that is out of reach in terms of us being able to change. Over the years, I've come to real. That was Deb Raji. Also, here's Regit Abebe. Born and raised in Ethiopia, she's now a professor of computer science at UC Berkeley. Abebe was educated in the Ethiopian National Curriculum and won a competitive scholarship to attend the International Community School of Addis Ababa for high school. She earned a BA in math at Harvard and a master's in applied mathematics. She co-authored research papers in math, physics, and public health as an undergrad, and served the Harvard Crimson as a staff writer, focusing on nearby public schools. Abebe was the second junior fellow inducted into the Harvard Society of Fellows with a computer science PhD, and the first female computer scientist, and the first African computer scientist in the society's history. As a Shirley Scholar at Cambridge University, she completed the math tripos, earning a Master of Advanced Studies in Mathematics. Abibe completed her doctorate in computer science at Cornell, receiving an Association for Computing Machinery dissertation award. She's the first African woman to complete a PhD in computer science in Cornell history. Abibe's research algorithms with a focus on equality and distributed justice. She's introduced new algorithmic frameworks for examining di discrimination and inequality. She served with the National Institutes of Health on artificial intelligence. When she joined Berkeley's Double E in computer science faculty, she was the first black female professor in the department's history and the second in the whole college of engineering. Habibe is a member of the Berkeley Artificial Intelligence Research Lab, the Berkeley Institute for Data Science, the Center for Information Technology Research in the Interest of Society, and the Center for Foundations of Learning, Inference, Information, Intelligence, Math, and Economics, Microeconomics at Berkeley. She also leads. Berkeley's Equity and Access in Algorithms, Mechanisms, and Optimization. She co-founded the Mechanism Design for Social Good, a research initiative, a multidisciplinary research collective that uses algorithms and mechanism design to tackle any problem. MD4SG hosts an annual workshop series highlighting work and connecting the community researchers committed to using algorithms to improve societal welfare. She co-launched the 2021 ACM Conference on Equity, Access to Algorithms, Mechanisms, and Optimization, and served as an inaugural program chair, program coaching, and was honored as a pioneer in the 2019 MIT Technology Reviews Innovators Under 35. We may also co-founded Black in Artificial Intelligence, with Tim Nguyen, a network of 1,500 AI researchers. They stage annual, annual workshops at the Conference on Neural Information Processing Systems and offer networking and collaboration opportunities. Through Black and AI, Olivia has spearheaded the academic program. Bloomberg listed her as one to watch. My background is quite mixed. Uh, so I was born and raised in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, where I was really interested in mathematics. So I, uh, that was what I was exploring. And I ended up at Harvard College where I majored in mathematics. But at the same time, I was also really interested in 
questions related to inequality and discrimination in the city of Cambridge where I was living and studying as a college student. It's interesting to look back now, but sort of the writing was on the wall because I was thinking about how algorithms that are being used to assign students to public schools were creating and exacerbating inequality that exists and how those same algorithms could actually be used to mitigate some of those inequalities. I realized that actually I could explore both my interest in mathematics and my interest in questions around inequality and discrimination at the same time as a computer scientist. So that's how sort of I landed from my background in math to what I do now. My work is really focused on questions around inequality and discrimination. What I usually do is I, you know, I have a couple of domains that I'm really interested in. So economic welfare, housing, um, education are domains where I'm, I've been uh, pretty deeply embedded. I think about ways in which discrimination plays out in these domains. Uh, ways in which we're not maybe doing a very good job measuring the inequality or the sort of disadvantage that people are facing. And then after doing that, I also think about what can be done about this. And finally, I'd like to highlight Timmy Gibbon. She's born in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Both her parents are from Eritrea. At 15, she fled Ethiopia after her family was deported and conscripted into the Eritrean Ethiopian war. She was initially denied a U.S. visa and lived in Ireland, but eventually received an asylum in the U.S. Gibber works on algorithmic bias and data mining. She's an advocate for diversity in technology and co-founder of Black and AI, a community of researchers working on artificial intelligence. She's the founder of the Distributed Artificial Intelligence Research Institute. In December 2020, she was the center of a public controversy stemming from her abrupt and contentious departure from Google as their technical co-lead of the Ethical Artificial Intelligence Team. Upper management requested she withdraw an unpublished paper or remove the names of all Google co-authors and said her paper ignored recent research. She requested insight into the decision and warned Google that noncompliance would result in her negotiating her departure. Google terminated her. It terminated her employment immediately, stating they were accepting her resignation. She had settled in Somerville, Massachusetts for high school, where she immediately experienced racism, with teachers blocking her even from advanced places advanced placement courses in spite of her high achievement. Notably, her father was a doctor, held a doctorate in electrical engineering, and her mother was an economist. Let's hear from her directly. Hi, thanks for having me. So I wanted to talk today about um, why I wanted to start DARE and um, why uh, it has the structure that it does. Um, I, uh, you know, um, very publicly got fired uh, uh, from Google a, a, a bit um, over a year ago. And then my, um, you know, co-lead was, was also fired. And uh, so when I was, um, after I, f I was fired from Google, uh, a number of people said, you know, hey, you, you shouldn't expect to um, have academic freedom in, in industry. You have academic freedom in academia. That's kind of what happens in academia, right? And in my experience, that, that, that's not true. Uh, both academia and industry have an underlying paradigm that's shared that that makes it difficult to do certain kinds of work. Uh, there is a power structure. I mean, we're seeing what happened, what, what's going on at Harvard right now, for instance, which is an example of, you know, uh, many such um, cases in my institution. So um, I, I knew that, and I have had many experiences with, um, you know, senior professors and senior academics in my field and how they view me and my work. And um, so I knew that, Basically, um, it, it the, uh, the this this setup was not a setup that would um, allow me to do the kind of work that I want to do, right? So, for example, if I want to get tenure, I still have to, you know, appeal to to powerful people in my in my um, uh, field, and I know how they feel about my work, right? Um, and 
if I want to, you know, recruit students and I, I want to have them do certain kinds of work, they might be at a disadvantage because, you know, you have to publish papers every like three months or something like that. And I think that's not conducive to the kinds of work um, I want to do. Um, the other thing is that um, the, the, the goal with which, you know, a lot of things are funded or the goal with which, um, you know, even if it's an industry or academia, the money basically comes from two places, right? One is um, DARPA or something like that. There's NSF too, but a huge portion of it is DARPA. And another one is, you know, um, company. So when you're in a company, you have to be able to like sell your work uh, in a way that, that explains to them why what you're doing makes them money somehow or why it's important or why it saved them money or something. So in our team at Google, we were kind of starting to be skilled at, at kind of figuring out how to, you know, uh, make that case. Um, and then when you're in school, I mean, in, in academia and you're applying for grants and stuff, um, again, uh, like you, you look at, for instance, self-driving cars, right? It was DARPA that had the robot cup or whatever. And now people talk about, oh, hey, self-driving cars are going to be great for, you know, accessibility and this and that. But when you look at the root of the, the, um, the incentive for why would a, mil a military entity want to fund this kind of stuff, it always has to do with warfare. Um, you look at, um, and, and a lot of technologies like that, for instance, machine translation, right, and and the Cold War, and, and many, many other examples in AI or outside of AI. So, and then people talk about AI for social good, right, and I think that's sort of like retro, trying to retrofit, right, so I, I said to, um, somewhere yesterday where um, I think it's kind of like, you know, you first build a tank and you have all of those resources put to building a tank and then you're like, oh, how can I uh, do something good with this tank, right? But you've already, you, the, the whole incentive first is like making you build a tank, which is a thing that's used for warfare. And then you will have to uh, try to learn like, how do I... <laughs> How do I do this thing for good, right? So that's how I feel like we do approach technology in general, um, because the entire underlying structure and foundation and funding and everything is is sort of incentivized by by these two things. So the idea of Dare then, and and you know, and this is the kind of stuff that STS people in science, technology, and society studies have talked about for a long time, right? Ad approaching technology as a socio-technical system. So then the idea of DARE is that if we want to um, arrive at a different conclusion, as in if we want to arrive at a different type of um, research output or, or process, then we have to start with the with the structure of the institute and, and how we approach our research and what kind of structure we want to build. There it is. Clearly, this extremely sharp since to understand you can't start at the end and end up with a decent beginning if your start was wrong the other thing all four of the sisters clearly understand is you each of them has either founded or co-founded some organization to ensure that their scholarship is collective and serves our African communities. Ashe. 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 You thanks, Brother Bill, Minister Bill, for that presentation. I mean, where we talk about historical tributes, there's this history of the past, but there's history that's being made right now. And uh, as has been outlined here, as I'm understanding it, you know, the, the, the wealthy, they will endeavor to direct and, and control that artificial intelligence in ways that put money in their pockets and whatever pain it might impose upon whoever it might follow they're not worried about that so we just have things we've got sisters like this i'm sure there are others behind the scenes that we don't know their names yet but we're going to give thanks that there are folks in there working doing all they can do to make sure this doesn't become just another uh, element of oppression uh, so thank you for that presentation, and uh, we have a, another song to come here. Um, Brother Tayemba and these beautiful Good sisters. Good morning. Um, 
before we do the second song, let me first of all let me say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, including myself and my father who is on the front of my keyboard here. Let me say that because this was Father's Day, we prepared something that we thought was going to be really special, and um, uh, technology has knocked us out again. We we the piano at the keyboard is knocking out the sound, so we can't do the songs the way we prepared them. But we're still going to do the song. Uh, I'm going to play the piano very softly. You may not be able to hear it, but my singers need to hear it. Uh, so we're not going to do it as we rehearsed. We haven't done anything as we rehearsed it so far. But um, we bring you this uh, with love and um, happy Father's Day. And let's go. And I'd say a few words. I'm Sobora, for those of you who may not know me, I consider myself a friend of Wose because I know a lot of the people from Wose. And I appreciate the opportunity to perform for you. I'm really nervous, so um, thank you in advance for being patient with me. This song goes out to all who may be missing their dads, their grandfathers and other father figures because they've moved on to be with the ancestors. Back when I was a child, before life removed all the innocence, my father would lift me high and dance with my mother and me and then spin me around till I fell asleep. Then up the stairs he would carry me and I knew for sure I was loved. If I could get another chance, another walk, another dance with him, I'd play a song that would never end. Cause I love, love, love to dance with my all again. When I and my mother would disagree to get my way, I would run from her to him. He'd make me laugh just to comfort me and finally make me do. Just what my mama said later that night when I was asleep. He slipped a dollar under my sheet, never knew that he would be gone from me. If I could steal one final glance, one final step, one final dance with him. I'd play a song that would never, never end. Cause I love, love, love to dance with my father again. Sometimes I listen outside and I hear how my mother cried for him. I pray for her. I pray for her. I know I pray for much too much, but could you send back? The only man she loved. I know what to do with you, surely. But dear Lord, she's dying to dance with my father again.
Every night I fall asleep, and this is all I ever try to dream. I say. I say. Give thanks and praises for that musical presentation. Now, I'm getting these signals here. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Yes. Um, now we're going to have our litany of sacrifice be presented with us for us, uh, Minister Alicia and Baba Ed. Save us, O Holy One, by your name. Vindicate us by your might. Hear my prayer, divine protector. Listen to the words of my mouth. How can we repay the Holy One for the gifts that have been given to us? We will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the God of our ancestors. We will fulfill our vows to our creator in the presence of all of our people. Gladly we bring our sacrifices to you. We will praise your name, O Amun Ra, for it is good. Umoja, unity. We shall strive to maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Kutichagalia, self-determination. We shall define, name, create, and speak for ourselves. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. We shall build and maintain our communities together. Our brothers and sisters' problems shall be ours to solve together. Ujamaa, cooperative economics. Together, we shall build and maintain our own businesses and together profit from them. Nia, purpose. We shall make our collective vocation the building and developing of our community and the restoration of our people to our traditional greatness. Kuumba, creativity. We shall do as much as we can and any way we can to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than when we inherited it. Imani, faith. We will believe with all our hearts in our God, our people. And in the righteousness and victory of our struggle. Ashe. Ashe. These are the litany of sacrifice. This is the, uh, we'll say, Oakland, um, um, emails i mean um it was the open website um and snail mail if you want to send your offerings there and we'll say sacramento um website as well as snail mail to send your offerings and on their websites then you can go to the appropriate place to click to be able to um digitally transfer your offerings and now um we will still ourselves for prayer. Most high, Mother, Father, God, we thank you ever so much for such a time as this. We thank you for bringing us together at this moment. We thank you for every heart, every mind, every spirit, every soul. We thank you for the gifts that you've given to us. And we thank you for the spirit of reciprocity. And in that spirit, as we are being given, we, we want to be able to give back, give back to our community of we'll say. We want to be able to, for those things that we are working on, those resources, that time, we wanna be able to give back into our communities. We wanna thank you for each and every person who has it on their heart to give at this moment as they are receiving. And we are thank you ever so much for those who desire to give. And we just ask your blessings over their offerings. We ask your blessings over their hands and their and and their minds and their bodies so that they may be able to um, create and and be of a resource to we'll say as well as to their community. We thank you, we ask 
and blessings over the offering that it be multiplied and go to its appointed places. We thank you for the ability to give. We thank you for the heart to give. We thank you for those who had a mind and heart to give, but had not the means at this time. We ask blessings upon them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Most High, for always providing for us. This is our prayer. Amen and Ashe. Ashe, Ashe. We give thanks for Minister Alicia and Brother Ed leading us in the litany of sacrifice and for all those who are contributing, those who, as Minister Alicia has said, had the heart and mind desire to do so, but not the means at the moment. At the moment, we're going to move ahead with uh, our ministerial message by our minister, Mali Latham. Minister Mali, come forward and give us the word. Ashe. 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 Oh, Ashe. So it seems like it's been a long day. Yes. <laughs> but trust and believe it's not going to be too much longer if it's up to me. I first though want to make sure we understand why we are here. I wish that the folks who were online on Zoom could see what the sanctuary looks like right now. We have a large contingent of some young folks. Yes. Yeah. When we talk about fathers and fatherhoods, they're the reason why yeah. we celebrate this day. Because without them, how could we be even acknowledged as fathers? Yeah. And even though the majority of my relatives of mine is about three generations, well, at least three generations yeah. worth of my offspring here. Yes. Yeah. I already got my present yeah. because I asked a few of my youngins to come on through. And it ain't easy for young folks to show up in places like this. Yeah. So we need to acknowledge that we have to create more opportunities, more situations for our young folks to come. Yes. And then when they come, make them welcome. Yes. Get them excited. Yes. Give them something to take home with them so they want to come back again. Yes. So on that note, I'm going to make sure this is short and sweet as possible. <laughs> so that the next time I say, hey, come on down, your uncle, your great uncle, your dad wants y'all to come see me. Y'all going to say, okay, I'll come on through again. All right. All right. All right. All right. Young folks that ain't used to that. When you hear us say, I say, it's just like being in another church saying, amen. If you agree with us, if you agree with me, you always follow an I say with an I say from you. I say, I say. See, I don't know if you really felt it. <laughs> I do. I say. I say. I say. I say. Emphasize that other I say. I say. Oh. I say, I say, oh. Father's Day yes. for me is a very auspicious occasion. Yes. I'm sure you guys can kind of tell because I made sure at least my chillings was here. Yeah. And my daughters, who are my best witnesses about fathers and fatherhood, came here. I wish our camera was reversed. So you can see them here because here we go. What? Yeah, just for a second. Smile. Connection is lost. Uh oh. I say. I say. Oh. I say. I say. Oh. Say, I say. Say, I say. We have a church that will last another 40 years is to have a future. Yes. Yeah. Our future is going to be invested in the young folks. Yes. So I want to talk to y'all briefly about something you know, fathers and fatherhood. Now, I'm going to register my ongoing 
observation. Sometimes it sounds like a complaint. And uh, it used to be kind of my issue. Uh -oh. That see, Father's Day seems to not get the same promo that Mother's Day does. Say it again. Yeah, you see, now, <laughs> granted, I'm appreciative as a father. Yes. I'm happy we have a holiday. Yes. Yeah, when I look at Mother's Day, I think we get the short end of the stick. <laughs> when I look at how you know, three months before Mother's Day is actually even here, they already got commercials reminding you to not forget Mother's Day and get them a gift. We get maybe a week before. Yeah. When it comes to places that recognize, you know, they have those jewelry commercials where they had them nice little rings and earrings and the yeah. necklaces, and they go remember her on her special day. I ain't seen one yet. And I'm somebody, if you can tell, I do enjoy some bling. Yeah, I ain't seen one commercial. Talk about them nice juries for your dear old dad. And a lot of times when we start talking about fatherhood, we get the little minimal mention. Don't be looking for compliments for something you're supposed to do. They never said that about women. <laughs> oh, okay, it's just me. All right, I understand. <laughs> But understand, in spite of what can appear to be a little bit of, of a slight, I'm celebrating Father's Day. And I think everyone here and everyone who's listening should find an opportunity to celebrate it somehow. Because for us, there's plenty of things to complain about. For us, there's a whole lot of stuff we wish were bad. For us, there are many things that if we just highlighted them, would make the picture look pretty sad. Yet, when it comes to us, you need to capture, you need to take advantage of any opportunity to celebrate. The young folks are good at partying. And we need to be that type of people too. Any excuse is a good excuse. To celebrate. Yes. It don't mean we do it to the ridiculous part where we can't show up to work or school or to other things that we are responsible for. Yet, a good time should be had to celebrate an occasion. And I'm going to share with you some things today that I think helps to celebrate fatherhood. Is that all right? Yes. You sure? Is that all right? Yes. So, as an additional thing, you know, because you heard me talk about how we kind of get it a little short. Now, even today, I'm going to even say it, you know, its theme is Father's Day. And in addition, tomorrow is Juneteenth. Yes. Now, my mother and her family hails from Galveston. So I kind of got to make a mention of Juneteenth. But look at that. We can't even get the, the day for ourselves. Here's Juneteenth, sneaking a little bit of our excitement and our thunder. But I'm going to say this about Juneteenth, and it is connected to fatherhood. Take, if you could, a little journey in history. I don't know how much of y'all know about the circumstances of Juneteenth, but there was a group of folks, a whole state of people, who were in slavery. And then this man on a horse, accompanied by some soldiers, showed up and said, hey, you guys, the government said you're free. That's right. Now, I don't know about you, but in my spiritual mind, in my eye, like my brother, Minister Sidney, would say, in my imagination, I would see them rolling up, and I've been out here cutting cotton hair and stuff and lifting stuff. And this guy on a horse comes and said, hey, y'all, it's free. Probably the silence was overwhelming. Because I would imagine in my mind, I would be like, is he serious? What's the trick? Are they trying to play us? Yeah. Who's behind the bushes? Because that going from a point of where your state is, which ain't good, struggling, suffering, and then suddenly somebody says, you ain't got to be like this no more. Juneteenth, in many ways, is like our 
present day situation when it comes to family and family relationship. Now, I know that's a big leap, but just trust me, I I'm going to attempt to make that connection about fatherhood and Juneteenth, where we start, where it seems forsaken, and then we go to liberation. Yes. From being forsaken to being liberated. Y'all gonna come with me? Yes. You sure now? Yes. Come on now. You look sound like you mean you got the look on your face when you heard your teeth. Like, what's the trick? <laughs> what you up to, man? There is even a start of the forsaken as an example in the Bible. In the crucifixion of Jesus. There's a point when the crucifixion starts and Jesus hollers out, Abba, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Yes. And I don't know about y'all, because see, my fatherhood journey wasn't the smoothest, especially at the beginning. It felt like maybe God is playing a trick on me, that I'm being punished, that, I, hey, how come you giving me all this? And I surely ain't ready for it. The challenge of going from that point is because you can't see the things ahead. Yet, you make the journey anyhow. Yeah. You trust that the divine you believe in, that the things you hold on to are going to get you through it in spite of what it looks like. Somebody be with me this morning. Yeah, I'm with you. Forsaken to freedom in fatherhood. See, there's a mantra that I kind of hold on to that I discovered in this book, my eye, Guiding Principle of Moral Living. If you have that book, on page 235, there's a passage where it is family and relationships. And in the hieroglyphics, there's a piece that goes, first love, marry, and care for children because the good of the family outweighs the individual family first. That's kind of a mantra for fatherhood, which is easy for me to tell you that, easy for me to read it to you, but anybody who has been in a position as a father and even as a child of a father knows it ain't easy to get to. First love, and then I like that piece, care of the children because it outweighs the individual. Now that's a whole lot of mothers who kind of understand that basic. And I think it has to do with the fact that they birth the children. But fathers, if we're going to be the type of fathers that's going to celebrate like we should celebrate, we have to own that too. Yeah. Now, I ain't going to spend today giving out a lecture or trying to give you a message about what it takes to be a good father. Not today. It is truly a celebration. But I also want to honor how it is. A celebration. Because everybody has, if we're going to be honest, that wonderful relationship, that healthy relationship that fatherhood can bring. Yet and still, it can happen for you. And it can happen without the presence of a biological father. It can happen if there's only family relatives available, because there's some pieces that all of us can embrace. I say, come on now. I say, I say, somebody wake up my grandniece. <laughs> the pieces of fatherhood start with commitment, the big C, from cradle yes. to the graveyard. Yes. Commitment. Yes. You don't have a time limit on fatherhood. You don't have a boundary. It ain't a quick time. You don't get to resign. You don't get to retire. Well, it's your, you have to keep regardless. And 
good fathers understand it can change, but it doesn't go away. Somebody be with me. Yes. Yes. See, yes. that big C is important that it's so that fatherhood doesn't be a burden. Mm. It's supposed to be a benefit. Yes. It's yes. supposed to be something that you can look back on with a smile. Yes. Yes. But I tell you, it wasn't always smooth. And my kids can tell you, except I don't want them to, that they know. <laughs> They wasn't always looking that smooth. They wasn't always looking like a benefit. But what gets you through is the reminder that it ain't going to always be negative. That it is going to be some positive. And the way you work between those is how do you keep committed? Then how do you keep focused regardless of what the community with your family of origin, what the neighborhood might be doing. That's what has gotten us to be here today. Because those people who were members when we first got here were committed. And the commitment outweighed all the struggle. Somebody, I hope somebody hears me. Yeah. Yeah. See, there's a yes. commitment that makes Fatherhood be above daddyhood. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. I said that wasn't no lecture, but I'll just sneak it in. Fatherhood versus daddyhood. We're not talking about making babies. We're talking about what do you do when the babies are made? That a commitment is created that obligates us to be better. Mm-mm. Yes. You don't have to be perfect. Please stop expecting the unattainable. Ain't nobody going to be perfect. Ain't nobody able to be perfect. And therefore, the relationships aren't going to be perfect. And the less that you keep expecting what you ain't going to get, the less you'll have disappointments, mm -hmm. the less you're going to have regrets, yes. the less you are going to look at it and go, oh. yes. Because what overwhelms us is when we attempt to do what we're not capable of doing right. anyhow. Say that. Say that. Maybe didn't nobody hear that. That's Say that. Right. See, we have to be reasonable yes. in our expectations yes. about our own behavior. Yes. And then it makes it easier to accept the behavior of others. Yes. I have to forgive myself. For my mistakes. Yes. And they will be mistakes. Yes. That's the human experience. Yes. And then it'll be easier for me to extend forgiveness to others. Yes. See, because I can't be as harsh on you when you make a mistake if I'm not going to look at my own. Uh oh. Yes, see, mm -hmm. I'm sure y'all was waiting for me to explain to you who to blame. We can't play the blame game. Right, right. We can't get there to where we can celebrate if we're still looking for the people that did me wrong. See, if we're still on that research mission, we'll be on that one all our lives. Because there always could be somebody to blame, starting with ourselves. There are so many of us sitting in these happy seats today that are still wrestling with four-year-olds, five-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, teenagers who are still upset with what happened then. Old folks, 50, 60 years old, still mad at what happened to them when they were 10. Well. Not to underplay those things that happened, but holding on to them prevent us from moving past that point. So you have a 50-year-old who is still functioning emotionally like a 12-year-old. And mm -hmm. we're struggling. When we are, we are refusing to re let go of the regrets, yes. let go of the problems, yes, yes, and yes. still yes. And be stuck. Yes. In the past. Yes. Say that. We don't celebrate today. Yes. 
the shoe's still mad about 1957. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to celebrate today when you are blessed to have something that a whole lot of folks, I know some people that would love to pay me to see if I can get my grand nieces and grandchildren to show up somewhere where they're at and be happy to do it. Mm -hmm. All of us want those types of benefits. Yes, yes. The benefits are what reward us so we don't get stuck when the problems show up. Yes, yes. And they will. It's those first things that are such a reward. Yes. The first time the baby's sitting there crying, and you get to hug them yeah. and go to sleep. Yeah. That first time when the baby pees on you. Oh. That first time the baby throws up and you're the one holding me yeah. and the new shirt gets <laughs> That The baby tries to waddle out there and step and falls over and you get to catch him and pick him up. The first time yeah. And you have to chase them. Yes. And boy, you get reminded how old you actually yes. are. <laughs> and our, our benefits. Yes. So that the mamas just don't get the joy, the daddies get them too. Yes. Oh, yes. See, that first stuff is the stuff that is the reward yes. for the commitment. Yes. Yes. So you get to see the first time they want to say some words. And you compete with the mama to get them to say Dada instead of mama yes. first. So we won't. You know, we, we get the first times when the children walk up to us now and want to tell us they want to date. Oh, there was such a meme. <laughs> See, some of y'all may not got to that point yet, but trust me, it'll become a benefit. Even for us fathers whose foreheads wrinkle up and we <laughs> start shaking ourselves. That becomes a reward and a benefit too. Yes. The first time they want to borrow the car. Yes. And the first time you want to teach them how to drive the car. Yes. And in spite of the fact that you may have a few seizures, you will see it as a benefit. Yes. Now these first, followed by these seconds, followed by these third, followed by the continual building of a relationship based on one simple thing. You're there. Yes, yes. Say that. Say yeah, that. See, Say that. you're present. Say that. And therefore you can participate. Yes. Yeah. So much of what the young people want from us yeah. ain't so special about what we say. That's right. How gifted we may sound. How good we might be able to repeat a song that comes from their generation. What it happens is being there is so much power. Because when you're simply there, you can convey things that you might not have enough words for. But I can tell my daughters, I got you. Whatever it is you're going through, I'm here. I got you. I might not have all the answers. I might even have some wrong suggestions. But I'm here. We get caught up a whole lot of times on things. Because the society would encourage us that we should get things. But what's more powerful is those things we cannot purchase and we cannot fake. Uh -oh. ah. So you can't fake the good stuff. Now you can present some stuff and you can hop down, do the big old clown somersault, but it ain't moving the children and the ones you are in care of. Because they know what's genuine and what ain't. Even if it's something unpleasant, they just rather you keep it real. Oh, Y'all don't feel it. If I met somebody who just discovered this, it was my children that taught me. <laughs> and I listened. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Because see, we have discussions with our young folks. Now, in my day, those were very few and far between because they had a separation. Yeah. Maybe it didn't work that well because <laughs> we produced some generation that ain't having that. And my daughters, 
God's good joke on me, decided early on they had an opinion. And whether I was ready for it, whether I wanted to hear it, whether I liked it, they was giving it to me. Because one of my daughters, I ain't gonna call her out by name, but she's my older daughter, reminded me it wasn't just that the child is the first. Versus being a father. <laughs> I wasn't born a father. I wasn't born ready to do the parenting. Yeah. They had not liked it then when I first heard it, but it became something that was new to me. Yes. See, one of my first lessons of the many that we can get to become blessings. Lessons become blessings, and you are celebrate that. Yeah. One more piece, because I promised you wouldn't be too tough and too long. <laughs> we have to learn how to let go. Okay. Oh, maybe you weren't okay. ready for that. Yeah. See, we need to know how to let go. Yeah. See, there are disagreements, arguments, disapproval that at some point, you got to let it go. You got to let go of those regrets. You got to let go of those resentments. You got to let go of these disappointments because they own you. And you don't get the role. Your relationship can't be bigger because you're still hanging on. You don't leave no room for some new stuff, because you're too busy hanging on to the past yeah. when she wouldn't listen to me, yeah. or she didn't agree with me, yeah. or she talked back to me. Okay, he, he didn't want to listen to me, and he wouldn't, yeah. yeah. And I'm back there still upset as they are getting older. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Don't you see how you lose it? Yeah. something? Yeah. If we don't let go, yeah. that's the paradox. That's the what's called oxymoron. In order to get, you got to let go of something. You can't hang on to something in this hand and be able to achieve something on this hand. Yeah. If you are expecting yourself to move on, yes, say that. You got to let go of that past. Yes. You're if right. you're expecting to gain something from being here now. You can't be stuck on yesterday. Yeah. You can't be arguing about what happened last month. You can't keep reminding your children of how they wasn't doing what you wanted to do when they was 11 and they're now 19. Uh, oh, somebody don't hear me. Mm. Stop holding on. Stop holding on to the heartache. Stop holding on to those obstacles that just seem to be so great. Stop hanging on to those stumbles, to the missteps. Stop it because it's preventing you. Your children are going to still get older. Yeah. It's a matter of will you grow with them? Yes. Come on now. Yes. Come on now. So highlight the right moves. Yeah. Play those tapes. Yeah. Remind them of how often. They've done something well. Yes. We got plenty of time to provide critical analysis yes. about their do's and their don'ts. Say that. And I'm sure we surely appreciated that type of talk when our parents came into it. <laughs> and then we think they should appreciate it when we do it. Come on, y'all. Celebrate. Yes. Highlight yes. the right moves. Because there'll be plenty of time yes. for you to have the wrong move. Yes. And boy, I don't want the wrong moves to outweigh the right. Come on with me. Practice forgiveness. Yes. It is so much easier for me to be disappointed about you. It's so much easier for me to stay where you went. It's work. To forgive. Yes. We always talk yes. about forgive and forget. I'm much more interested in the forgiveness. Yes. The memories of fade as I get older anyway. I'll be mad, upset, and won't even remember why. But the forgiveness 
is what allows me to heal. Because if I can forgive him, yeah. then I can forgive myself. Yes, yeah, say that. We get to come together. Come on, y'all. Yeah. 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 Say that. Expect that you're going to be better at it. Men, don't kill ourselves to what the voices say. Don't pick up what Oprah is suggesting, what social media is suggesting. There is a divine God, yeah. and most of it is set in our own conscience. Yeah. If you believe like I believe, God has already put some good stuff in you. You just have to get in contact with it and then trust it yeah. when you feel it, yeah. when you see it, yeah. and you experience yeah. it. Yeah. I don't chase it up yes. from the focus. Yeah. It's tough. Because sometimes people let us down. Yes. Yet, I have not given up on others, and that has allowed me not to give up on myself. Your better gets good. Your better becomes best, yes. and it becomes great. Yes. Your best time will be the time that you spend reflecting on the good times. And you can make good times happen right now. This is a current stuff. This ain't something you could have got a few years ago, and it's too late. This is an on-time, right now, benefit. You can create a good time right now. If you're like me, I'm looking forward to the good time I have when I come out of here. Because I love to eat. Yeah. And I love to eat well. Yeah. And this is one of the times of the year where I get it the way I want it. You understand? I yeah. don't know about y'all. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. enough for me to celebrate. Yeah. You understand? A good meal that I don't have to pay for. That is coming to me on my, on my demand. Come on, well. I'm not upset with that. Uh, that well, well, I don't know how you don't want to celebrate that. I don't understand it. But I do know that there will be many a thing that could happen that could rob you from the rewards. And in case you're wondering, just because you get it good today, don't mean it can't be tough in the mind. Yes, yes. But I will continue to repeat that what gets me through the tough time is where I really love on the good times. I wasn't always in a position to be celebrating Father's Day. Like many of you, I didn't have a great image, a great role to lean upon. That can't be your excuse. Yes, yes. That happened in a situation none of us could control. We couldn't control the families we were born in. Yes. We couldn't control the origins we come from. Yes. But we can, we can, we can create a new. Yes. Each day we have an opportunity to make it better. Yes. We don't make it perfect. But we make it better. Yes. Progress. Yes. Progress. Yes. And that is the excitement of hope. Yes. I don't know about you, but it excites me. It gets me able to get up in the morning. It lets me let go of the time when I wanted to go, oh, not some more of this. But understand, fathers, get in it to win it. Yes. Fathers, stay prayed up so yes. you can get paid up. Yes. I want you to dedicate a little something to me. And I want y'all to say it with me. Drama free. Drama free. 2023. Tell me. Drama free in 2023. Drama free 
In 2023, just think this year will be, and we just work on that. Problem three. Yes, yeah. So it's time for fun. It doesn't mean we ain't going to still have to work. Doesn't mean we still going to have some frustration. It is, though, the type of job that is the most fun, the most fulfilling, the most demanding. The most rewarding, the most enjoyable job you have never been hired for yeah. and won't get paid a dime. Yes, yes, yes. Any person who wants to experience life at its fullest, come on down. Accept that God given treat. I am so proud, I'm so honored, and I'm so privileged yes. to be a father. Yes. My children have made it so. Yes. Yes. I say. Yes. I say. 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 We have Thank been, you, we have been blessed by a very powerful, deep message from Minister Mali, fatherhood uh, versus daddyhood, I, something that I made note of, fatherhood versus daddyhood, fatherhood, that, that endless commitment, that, 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 that always be there to, to do the best you can to prov provide the guidance to your children, to your sons and daughters, to be, to be a, a part of the team between yourself and the mother of your children, your wife. Uh, you know, one of the things that I was that came to my mind from the, from the teachings that we've learned that one of the one of the the, the uh, uh, most critical, most important uh, dimensions of uh, of African life, of life in the village, was to teach the children how to be good parents. And so, uh, in that context, we hear you know from Minister Mali today. There's some some things that we need to know for ourselves and then do all we can every way we can to pass it on to our children so that our families will be in on that foundation that uh, 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 unity that that just working together always and so uh, uh, we needed to be listening and then we need to take that into our own lives and take it to our homes take it to our families and do all we can uh, to be the best fathers the best fathers that the Most High empowers us to be and, and pass that information, that inspiration on uh, to, our, to our children, to our sons and our daughters. So we just wanna open the door for, for membership in the Wall State community. If you wanna be part of this community where we know it's important that we learn how to be good parents, not only good mothers, but good fathers. And that's our focus right now in Father's Day. Learn how to be good fathers Know that we made some mistakes because we living in a, in a in a in a in a in a whatever this place is just <laughs> in this nation that just doesn't respect has not respected uh, African families like they should African fathers in particular rather build more jails and than, than than institutions that help us know positive things about life. So uh, we have. This, this institution that we've built ourselves and we give thanks and praises that we're able to draw in one like Minister Malley to be part of who we are, to share what he knows and what lessons he's uh, been through, share his spirit. So I don't know if there are any here that want to join this Wall Street community of the Sacred African Way. Join this community where fatherhood needs to be celebrated and practiced every day. Uh, are there any? Raise your hands, take your mute off, say, let me in this community. We invite you right now. Is there anyone? 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 I don't see or hear anyone saying, I guess everybody here is already a member. Maybe next week you can bring someone with you. 
<laughs> that you feel like you want to share the Rose community in the sacred African way with them. And so we will move on. I think right now we're going to have uh, our closing song. Lift every voice and sing. Go, we have camera, we have camera. Yeah. Everybody go to the front, go to the front, go to the front. Okay. Yeah. This way, this way, this way. Oh, yeah. Is it unmuted? All right. Is it unmuted? Yes. For those who are on Zoom, join in with us. We'll lift our own uh, closing song. Lift every voice and sing. Start us off. Lift every voice and sing. Lift Let us march on let us march on till victory is won. Let us march on. Let us march on with Amen Ra. Let us march on in the spirit of Mark. Let us march on with Septebi power. Let us march on till victory is won. So now as we close, we just want to give thanks and praises for the sacred ancestors. Yes, Brother Mali. Yes. No, no, no. Uh, I was just getting ready. Because I see. Those ancestors, thank those fathers who have set the path before us, those who still today work with their children, much more than the image, much more than the media claims it happened. So let us be one as we come together and as we depart from this place as one people. One, one people. One, 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 one love. One love. One love. One love. One divine purpose. We know that we are indeed the most beautiful people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.